Good morning! Hey y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Mogi Bath, and for those of y'all who are new here, I own a six-figure reselling business selling primarily women's clothing on places like Poshmark and eBay. Today's video, we're back at the bins. <laughs> Big surprise here. It's been almost a week since I went to the bins, so I now have a newfound perspective on kind of what I'm looking for, especially when it comes to buy sell trade stores. I'm also buying things for Mogi Box, and uh, I'll have my first release this week. And of course, first and foremost, I'm buying things for my reselling business. So hopefully we can find good things all the way around. Fingers are crossed. For those of y'all who don't know, the Goodwill Outlet or the bins is a place where Goodwill takes all of their clothes that don't sell and they also take a lot of their donations because they just receive so many donations that they can't keep up and they place them in these big blue bins and you go through them with your hands and pick out some things you want and you pay by the pound. So uh, in Portland, if you hit 25 pounds, you pay $1.29 per pound. So I think it's 2 dollars if it's under 25 pounds so it's it's a fun time if you haven't been to the bins definitely find one in your area if you have one we didn't have one in Kansas they're not in every state but if you have one near you you should definitely check it out all right let's head inside and see what we can find Alright, another day at the bins. I love going to the bins and sourcing for three different reasons because it just makes me be able to leverage my time better. And this is a pair of airy wide leg culottes that I found to put in the Mogi boxes. Actually y'all, all the items that uh, I'm going to feature today in the haul have already sold um, with the drop on that happened last Friday. So. If you haven't uh, signed up to be on that email list, because I'm really communicating about them through email, I'll link the form down below where you can do that. But found these Hudson jeans. Hudson is an okay brand with certain styles, but they had way too much uh, pulling on that middle seam there where the elastic had given out in the stretch denim. This is a PGA Tour a polo. I don't know very much about golf wear, um, and I, that's something I want to learn more about. This was the Banana Republic and actually looked really nice. It still had, you know, remnants of the new tag on there. However, I wasn't sure if those three little diamonds underneath the Banana Republic uh, logo meant that was factory or not. If you know, can you let me know in the comments down below? Because I ran into several really nice pieces of Banana Republic, but I didn't want to pick up Banana Republic factory because of those little diamonds. I know that's how it works with J. Crew and a few others, but um, yeah, let me know in the comments down below. So Cut From The Cloth is a brand I like to sell, but again, too much of that um, pulling. And the Aster, the label, the dress that I picked up earlier, I'll talk about in the thrift haul. I love selling that dress and I've sold it before. Going through um, this bin, I really, my eye really lands on denim a lot of times and that's what I'll naturally go for. Oh my gosh, I found this Everlane ribbed v-neck sweater. I've actually sold this sweater and thrifted it before, but it had a hole and I, it was just such a prominent middle front and center hole that I decided to pass. Oh my gosh, this is the first time I'm finding a Goldie in the thrift or actually at the bins. I don't know actually if I found it at the thrift store. Maybe, um, but this is definitely the first time finding it at the bins. I was so, so, so happy to find it because as I've stated a million times, I love selling a Goldie. I like selling BDG denim too, and it's a brand I'll sometimes take to Crossroads, but the pockets were way too pilled, just not in good enough condition. That was smart wool, so happy to find that. Okay, so I found this Adidas t-shirt, and Adidas and Nike are two brands that I want to learn more about because I just don't know. So I looked up the style number on Google and then that told me the style name. Luckily, that's one nice thing about Adidas. So I went over to Poshmark and looked up comps and comps looked a little bit all over the place. So I decided to pick it up. I'll take it to Crossroads. If they don't want it, I'll try it out myself because it is a more kind of 
recent piece and the style was cool enough. Okay, next was a tea by Talbots. This is a piece I picked up for the Mogi box, um, but Talbots is a brand I just don't know that very much about. So I did want to stick, check comps on a few pieces. That's the nice thing about Talbots is that they do include the style number and the date it was produced on the materials tag. So I can be sure to only pick up more recent pieces. And this piece was from 2020, which was great. I looked up the style number on Google and it didn't actually produce anything. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So I went over to Poshmark and just searched for a belted cardigan. And it looked like it was selling, you know, the newer, more recent styles looked like they were selling between $20 and $30, which is exactly what I'm looking for for Mogi Box. So I went ahead and picked it up. Okay, the next piece was a pair of Dickies corduroy pants, and this is a brand I also don't know that very much about, but luckily this was a newer piece in excellent condition, and it had a style number, so I was able to look it up on Google, get the style name, and then head on over to Poshmark to check comps, and there weren't a lot of available comps or sold comps, but the two sold comps that there were were great. I was actually picking these up thinking I was going to take them to Crossroads, but decided to sell them. This was a loft dress that I ended up getting for the Mogi box. This was a Columbia dress I wanted to look up to see if I wanted to put it in the Mogi box as well. Columbia is a brand I'm constantly looking up and checking comps on. And I was able to find out by Googling the style number that it's the Global Adventure dress. And then when I was checking comps on Poshmark, it did look like it was selling between $20 and $30, which is great. This is a brand I actually didn't know. And since it was 100% linen and seemed to be you know, a fairly well-made piece, I wanted to look it up. But after looking up comps on Poshmark, the solds were so bad that I decided to throw it back. All right. I found this new tag Adriana Papel dress for myself to sell. I was looking for the style number, hoping that it was on the new tag, but it wasn't. I decided just to go ahead and get it because, you know, it's new tag Adriana Papel at the bins. This was Lululemon, and that size tag told me it was an older piece, and it had a lot of pilling. So I'm getting better at throwing back Lululemon when those two things are true, and I did. This is a piece I picked up for the Mogi box. I was able to find the style number on there pretty easily. I was really excited to find this Eileen Fisher sweater, but it had a hole that someone had repaired. Okay, yeah, that was a little mid-bends uh, comps check. I like to do it periodically while I'm at the bends so that I don't have to save it all for the end because I'm pretty tired by the end of the bends. Okay, here's the damage. <laughs> What I got, lots of stuff. Got 44 pounds and spent 56.89. So now it's time to load it all in my car. Lots of good stuff I can't wait to show you in the haul. So I'll see you then. Okay, it's time for the haul. I've got a few different categories of things here. I've got a few things I purchased for myself. Yeah, things of course I purchased for my reselling business, things I'm taking to Crossroads, and then things for Mogi Box. I think I'm gonna put the Mogi Box stuff at the end of the haul just because I don't want to bore those of y'all who don't really care about it. And I don't know if I'm gonna share the Mogi Box stuff going into the future. If you're interested in what Mogi Box is, I'll put a description of what it is down in the description below, and you can fill out a form if you want to be on that email list. But I'm having my first drop of Mogi Boxes this week. So I want to make sure to get enough stuff for that and we'll see how it goes because it's very much an experiment at this point. But you can see what I'm picking up for that this time around and let me know in the comments down below if you want to see what I'm picking up for that in the future. I don't want this to become the Mogi Box show but <laughs> since I'm going anyway, if y'all are curious, I'll go ahead and share it. Okay, so let's start with a few hard goods that I actually picked up for myself. The first is this, it's a full collection of Beatrix Potter, Peter Rabbit books, which they're little bedtime stories, which I'm going to read our little baby girl. Did any of y'all grow up watching the animated series of this? Matt and I both have like had nightmares from that one video. It's actually, it's in this, it's called the roly poly pudding, um, where this cat is like buttered up by rats and then rolled in dough and the cat, <laughs> and the cat's alive the whole time. <laughs> anyway, a little bit traumatizing for a child, but uh, I thought this was really cute. And actually, 
on the bottom here, it's saying that it retailed for 120 pounds. So when I checked eBay, people are selling this or listing this for 60 bucks plus shipping. So if I wanted to sell it, I could. But I thought that was cute. I got some of these uh, dog training pads because my dog's getting old. He actually doesn't need them right now, but I just thought, hey, for the future, especially if we like go out of town or something to provide her watches him with, those could be useful. And then the last thing, I have an obsession with puzzles. And this, I love a thousand piece puzzles. This one's really cute and looks like it might be kind of hard. So, and it's brand new, still in, which is what I always look for because I don't want to deal with a puzzle missing pieces. It's in the plastic, which is amazing. And it's so, so cute. So my mom and I love to do puzzles. And so when she's in town next, we'll do this one. All right. So let's move on to clothes. Okay. So if you watched my day in the life video, you saw one time that I went to Crossroads, they didn't take anything from me. And that's when I realized they're really picking up. First of all, they're not buying a lot right now because it's kind of in between seasons, but they're really picking up based off style, not necessarily brand. And so I wanted to pick up a couple things in here just to see like if how far that goes. Like, will they pick up styles of brands by like Target, Forever 21. So those are brands I got. And I've seen those brands in the buy sell trade store before. Additionally, when I sold to Buffalo Exchange, they explained it to me as that, that they buy based off style and then they price based off brand. So I'll be interested to see if Crossroads doesn't take this stuff if Buffalo does. But this is Forever 21. It's new with tag. And I never pick up Forever 21. I think the last time I picked it up was like 2018 or something and it sat forever. But this is a puffer, like a cropped puffer coat and it's in this hot pink color and it's, you know, shiny kind of what would be like vegan patent leather type look. So it to me definitely seems on trend um, or trendy. So we'll see if they take that. I came across a new bin that had tons of vents in it and I love selling vents. It can have a slower sell through rate just because you know, the buyer is typically like a professional person who's less price sensitive, but um, yeah, it can just sit around for a little bit of time, but these are the new labels as well. So I was very, very happy to find these. This is a button down, it's Vince. It is made of just cotton and modal, but got these really cute buttons on it. Got these patch pockets, really cute. And another reason I like selling Vince is they do have this style number on the materials tag so it's pretty easy to look up i thought these were so cute they are i kind of want to keep them they're size small they're these high-rise trousers pleated at the front really really cute they're really lightweight and i feel like they would be really comfy i wonder what they're made out of triacetate so those are cute and then i think the two last pieces i found were sweaters and these definitely need to be pilled, but they're very cute and very soft. Uh, this is Vince Extra Small. It's kind of this funnel neck sweater. I think it, it feels like it's got to be at least partially cashmere. 100% cashmere. Yes. So, yay. Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> very, very exciting. This can probably go for close to $100. So, I'm super excited about that. And then I found another one. I don't... Is this one cashmere? This one really needs to be depilled. Yeah, this one's also 100% cashmere. This one is a small, and you can tell the new tag, it's tacked on, the font is a little bit different, um, and it's that light gray color usually. And this one is a striped, it's a similar style, but yeah, I don't know if you can see. Here, let me show you some of the pilling that needs to happen. It's pretty hardcore, <laughs> but um, we'll make it happen. Okay, so in the same bin, I think, I found this sweater as well. This is a brand I really like selling, Nick and Zoe. And this is just a long line open front, you know, space dye cardigan, size medium. I think it should do really well. Nick and Zoe is a more mature brand that, again, won't get a ton of likes and stuff like that, but it's just one of those brands like Eileen Fisher or Vince that will sell. Oh, I'm seeing... <laughs> There's a stain on this Vince sweater, so I'm gonna have to get that out. But I think I should be able to. Okay, more projects. <laughs> but yeah, I really like selling Nick and Zoe. It will like 
just randomly sell full price or you know close to full price and always get reasonable offers on it so while it's not going to attract a ton of likes and attention uh, it's one that will just randomly sell out of the blue and i find that to be the case with eileen fisher and brands like vince and theory as well okay i love selling this brand this one should hopefully sell really quickly smart wool it's a very quick seller this is just a t-shirt it's got a stripe pattern really thin stripe and it's a men's large so hopefully it should do well it actually i couldn't see any flaws on it no holes which is also you know happens a lot with smart wool or any kind of wool icebreaker ibex type of pieces uh just you know mothballs and all that stuff okay this is a style of dress try my phone <laughs> i have sold this style of dress so many times i'm gonna pull it up um just so y'all know to look out for it because it does really well by this brand Okay, actually it doesn't really have a style name. It's just called the Aster the Label A-Line Lace Midi Dress. And I've sold this in pink, I've sold it in silver, um, and now I'm going to sell it in blue. So here's Aster the Label. This is a brand that's very trend conscious. It's sold in places like Revolve and Shop Bob sometimes. And it's got this really pretty whipure, I'm, I'm not pronouncing that right, lace that extends beyond actually the lining so uh, kind of the bottom area sheer it's really really cute dress so that's a size medium i think that was the first piece i found at the bins and was really happy to do so and actually when i saw it, i was like that's the Astro label dress <laughs> and it was so yay i got another one i can't stay away from these oshkosh because little overalls these are like pleated at the front really cute uh, these aren't made in america they're made in china they're 12 months but i just got them for my baby okay speaking of wool i found another icebreaker piece this is a men's large hoodie this is actually an older label and i double checked to make sure this wasn't a knockoff because yeah i just i wasn't sure but it, it, it's not it's just an older label but this is actually in really good condition it's a sweatshirt with that again space dye kind of marled gray it's got a hood on it men's large was happy about that okay this I got to cross off my Ben's Bolo brand bucket list. I barely ever find this brand. If I do, it's usually at Crossroads and I've never ever found it at the Ben's. And I think I even mentioned in my last video that it's one of my favorite brands to sell ever right now. This isn't the best piece by them, but still, I was so excited to find it. This is a Goldie, yay, size 27. I don't know exactly what style this is yet, but they do have the style number but this says exclusively for Amour Vert, which is a brand I've talked about on this channel before, and it's a brand that I really like to pick up and sell, and they focus on like sustainable silk and uh, loungewear pieces, so interesting that they collabed with the Goldie. This, these are jeans, they're like high-rise skinny white jeans. They do have stains on them, so I'm going to have to stain treat them. There's one there, there's one there but i'm actually getting in the habit of being a lot more proactive about laundry when it comes to bin stuff because i'm just doing a lot of bin stuff these days so it's easy to just stay in the rhythm of doing laundry okay this next piece i actually just saw a big old flaw in it oh where'd it go sad but i think i might actually still i don't know take it to the buy sell trade store see if they want it because it's in the grand scheme of things still a very wearable piece this is a free people duster cardigan which is usually a really great performing category by free people it's got this ribbed knit in a mustard yellow and it's got really cute buttons on it as well it's too bad that this piece has a flaw but i'll still take it to the buy sell trade store okay so the next brand is a brand i love selling adriana papel and it's new with tag. However, this style, I don't know, isn't necessarily one I would pay up for by any means. I don't know if I would even get it at the thrift store unless it was half off. But at the bins, I'm willing to try it out for sure. And the reason I say this is because it is more of a bodycon style, like midi length dress, more of a cocktail dress rather than like an evening gown, which is what I really prefer selling by this brand. However, this is still a really great piece for you know, a mother of the bride or uh, someone attending a wedding to wear or a funeral, you know, it's just a really versatile piece. So uh, it still could do really well. We'll see how it does. It's a size eight, which is a good 
size. So, and it's new with tags, so who knows? That, that one piece could very well pay for this entire haul. All right, this is a brand I keep picking up for kids' clothing, and I think I just kind of want to create a mini collection from this brand that I find at the bins, and then maybe even start selling this brand in like lots. It's Hannah Anderson. It's a higher end kids wear brand that's based in Portland. And this is just a little dress with this red print on it. And the reason I love Hannah Anderson is because they use organic cotton and they make a lot of their pieces from 100% cotton. So this is 100% cotton, love it. I checked comps on this piece because I really wasn't sure about it. Never sold this brand actually. It's Dickies, but this looked like a really on trend piece. Uh, it's kind of got that wide whale corduroy. It's not super wide, but wide enough. It's not like a skinny corduroy. It's got these cargo pockets on the side, this little strap, and these are white and in excellent condition. They're juniors, so they have it at a size one slash 25. I'll just list it as women's 25. I picked it up because I was like, oh, I'll take this to Crossroads. But then after I checked comps, um, there are only two sold comps on Poshmark for these pants, and I think it was at 40 and $50. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll just sell it. That's great. Um, so I'm excited to get those listed. This I picked up, I think I'm gonna take it to Crossroads, but if they don't take it, I definitely wanna sell it because I'll be interested to see how it does. This particular line within Adidas, Adidas built for purpose. This is called the Adidas Cavalty, K-A-V-L. Tea, K -A -V -L. And there's different versions of this tee and some of them can go for a lot of money. It also has like what looks like a serial number embroidered on the back. So I think it's definitely a more trendy piece by Adidas. So I'll see if Crossroads or Buffalo Exchange want it and if they don't, I wouldn't mind experimenting with it for myself. This I definitely picked up for Crossroads slash Buffalo Exchange. This is Target wild fable but like what i was saying earlier i want to see how far their kind of style based buying goes this is i think a very trendy piece it's a cropped knit piece it's got you know some cable knit and then these little flowers i thought that was really really cute um, it is obviously just target but we'll see and it's also a size extra large Similarly, I got picked up this for the buy sell trade, Brandy Melville. When I've taken t-shirts by Brandy Melville in the past, they've purchased them. Last time I took a dress, it was an older style, and actually Buffalo Exchange did pick it up. So I'm still picking up Brandy Melville for, for buy sell trade store, but yeah, Brandy Melville, and this is just a little cropped t-shirt with an embroidered dragon on it. So I think that should do well. Okay, this piece, I actually didn't really inspect this piece that well when I was in the thrift store. It's one of the last pieces I picked up and I was like, okay, yeah, let's just get it and we'll deal with it later, which is not a uh, good strategy by any means. Oh, someone left their glasses in here. I had a dream last night that I found finally found money. Oh no. Oh well, hopefully they have others. Let's check the other pocket. Maybe they left some money in here. Nope, but this is, okay. <laughs> This is a massive cardigan, look, and it is from Anthropology. Pilcrow, that's the new Pilcrow tag. It doesn't say and the letterpress, it just says Pilcrow now. And I imagine this piece is gonna do well. I don't, oh, I see a, I see a hole. I'm still gonna list it as is because this is just such a substantial piece and it's really cute, long duster cardigan in this patchwork knit which is very much on trend. I think it's super cute. We'll see how it does, even with the hole. But yeah, I want to pick that up. Found another sweater that I was so, so, so excited to find. This is actually in the same bins rotation. And this is, an, I found, I think, this exact piece in a different color in my last massive bins uh, thrift trip, which I'll link up on the screen. This is Barefoot Dreams, and uh, Barefoot Dreams is one of my favorite brands to sell. They sell this really, really soft, like, chenille-like fabric, and this is, you know, their cozy chic that performs really well, and this one has a hood, and it's a size large, so excited to get that one listed. Okay, this is a brand that I decided I'm going to start picking up at the bins now, and especially pieces like this, and especially larger sizes, although this one is a small. This is Soft Surroundings. This is a cardigan though. And I think this is a really unique piece. So I wanted to go ahead and pick it up. Those are kind of my two things. Either it's gotta be really unique and kind of embroidered or have some kind of highly designed element to it. 
or it's gotta be a larger size. And so I think this is obviously very highly designed. <laughs> like a lot of thought and intention went into this design and it's cute. It's got the, you know, the scalloped trim, this like hole type crocheting in the middle. Very cute. So we'll see how it does. And also soft surroundings has the style number on their materials tag as well. So hopefully I'll be able to find it. This one's 2DK14. I'm kind of curious to look it up. This is called the Albi cardigan and it's sold in the past for around $45. So yay, I could pay for a good amount of this haul by itself. Okay, we've got another Hannah Anderson. This one's actually in really good condition. I kind of want to check comps on it and see how it does, but it's a little coat that's lined with this really nice pink type Sherpa. Um, it's got this really cute, you know, psychedelic retro 60s floral print. Very, very cute. What size is this? It is a size, I don't know, 90? I don't know how Hannah Anderson sizing works, so I'll have to figure that out. Okay, this is interesting to me. I kind of looked it up and wasn't didn't get all my answers. It seems as though this line within Spanx still does well and sells for a lot of money. This is Star Power by Spanx. I don't know, weird. But I love picking up Spanx shapewear. I think in my last video I even talked about a Spanx slip dress that I got at the bins that sold quickly and for good money. And this one I think should do even better. It's like a full bodysuit, and then it's got this like metallic detail. So maybe that's the star power element. I don't know why I would have that. <laughs> maybe if you want to wear it as like, yeah, if you want to wear it as like a shirt, I think that might be why. And then it also do double duty as a shapewear piece. Okay, I kind of got this for my niece who hopefully is visiting this summer. She's turning seven this month, so this is a little bit too big for her but I thought this was really cute and I can give it to my sister when she comes, hopefully this summer. But this is a Joe's piece. If not, I can save it for my daughter. <laughs> but it's a size eight and it's this embroidered romper, which I thought was really, really cute. It's actually even got a Joe's patch on the pocket. Darling, I wonder how that does. Those types of pieces do. And then the piece de resistance is this brand. I posted about it on Instagram, so if you follow me on Instagram, you already know. But I think I'm gonna send this to the Rail Rail because I was trying to find the style name for this particular piece. I couldn't find it anywhere, but they sell a lot of pieces like this. The brand is Hellacy. This brand, look it up on Poshmark. I'm definitely going to feature it in my Instagram daily bolo brand stories eventually. I picked this out of the bin and I was like, what the heck is going on with this top? Because the, this sleeve is so long and this one is short. So I was like, okay, this is a highly designed piece. Like this isn't your typical Ann Taylor Loft rainbow stripe shirt. This is something's going on here. So yeah, this shirt probably retailed for hundreds, if not a thousand dollars. And it's a really, expensive brand that does still does really well on Second Place Marketplace. I don't actually, I'm kind of torn as to whether I want to send it into the Real Real or not. It doesn't seem like there's a ton of high demand on the Real Real and they tend to, you know, mark things down pretty aggressively if it doesn't sell quickly. Whereas if I sold it myself, I'd be, I'd be willing to be more patient with it, especially since I paid so little for it. So I was very, very, very excited about that piece. What size is it? It's just got this asymmetrical, just to describe it, it's this rainbow stripe, which I thought would make it easy to find, but I searched rainbow stripe on Google and it came up with nothing. It's got this ruched long sleeve, which is, is kind of their style. They have a lot of this asymmetry going on in a lot of their designs. And so yeah, it seems like a very quintessential Hellacy piece, but I couldn't find it. So I would have to, it'd be hard to model it. It'd be hard to show how it fits because it probably wouldn't hang on the hanger very well. And then my mannequin doesn't have arms. So yeah, I don't know, we'll have to figure it out. Okay, so that is everything that I purchased for myself and for Crossroads. Now, if you wanna stick around, I'm gonna go over what I got for Moby Box. All right, I'm gonna do this quickly. The first piece is Loft, and this is a really soft like chenille turtleneck 
it's in excellent condition. I wish Loft put on their tag what season it's from because it would be a lot easier for me to pick up more recent styles, <laughs> but they don't. This one does, it's in really excellent condition and it seems like it's from a recent style and Goodwill won in $9.99 for it, but no one paid that, so it's going in a box. <laughs> Next is something I was kind of on the fence of whether I wanted to sell for myself or put in a box. If it doesn't fit into the boxes this time around, I might just go ahead and sell it myself. And this is Lulu's. It's a off the shoulder short dress. I don't know, I might sell this for myself. <laughs> now I'm going back and forth. And that's Rayon. I might check comps and I might sell this for myself so if you don't see it in a box, that's why. But I thought it was really, really cute. This, I think I am going to put in a box. It's Madewell Texture and Thread. Really cute. Oh, I do see a little stain on it. So if I, that doesn't come out, I probably won't put that in a box, but those type of pieces. I did want to include some Madewell in these boxes because that was one of the brands that y'all were asking for on the form. The number one brand that was asked for on the form was American Eagle. So I wanted to pick up a good amount of American Eagle. And what I love about American Eagle is they do put the season this item is from on their tag. So this one is from September of 2018. So it's a fairly recent piece. Just this open front cardigan with those patch pockets. I feel like this is a type of piece that will do really well. And then also I picked up these airy pants. I think these are so cute. They're a size medium. These look like something that we sold at Madewell for sure. They're these wide leg pants with this textured fabric and this gathered waistband. These would be really comfy to wear during pregnancy. <laughs> okay, Prana was a brand that was really popular amongst the brands that I had pre-written on there to like check off. And so when I found this, I definitely wanted to get it. It is a Prana dress, which I've heard from other resellers. People still sell these fairly well, so I wanted to pick it up. It is a stripe dress and it's actually a size extra large. So I think this one it should do really, really well. Okay, I got some lighter items because I'm trying to pack it as much to five pounds and oftentimes you have to kind of put one lighter item in there at the end in order to get it just to five pounds. So this is American Eagle. It is a tie-dye crop t-shirt with this lettuce hem, which is very much on trend. It's got this world graphic and it still has the size dot. So I think it's brand new, which is great. This is Aerie, another one, Offline by Aerie, and this is a really cute zipper crop top or a sports bra. I think I could see that doing really well on Poshmark. Another American Eagle sweater. This is, I love this, it's like a cerulean blue cropped sweater. Really cute. This is from September 2019, so even more recent. Love that, and it doesn't really even have any pilling, which is great. From the brands I pre-filled out, so on the form I put some a list of brands to check which ones you'd be interested, in, and then I put a text box, what other brands would you be interested in? And the number one from the ones I had written out was J. Crew, and so I wanted to get some pieces from J. Crew. I didn't come across too many this time, but this is a sweater. This one does have a tiny flaw. It has a tiny hole, but it's 100% merino wool. So I want to go ahead and pick it up and I think it still will do well. I'll just disclose that in the box listing. And this is Talbot's, which is another brand that was requested, was highly voted on. And this is a velvet patterned top with this cow neck. Another Lulu's piece. This is a little ting top stripe here, let's see. The size extra small, which in Lulu's, I think extra small does really well. And it's cute, it's really cute. It's kind of cropped and then it has this bow tie on the back. Cute. It was at Goodwill previously. This is a new with tag toward piece. I'm like really <laughs> curious to see how, how I can fit this in a box because it's pretty heavy. But it's new with tag toward and toward was trying to sell it for 50 bucks. So it should do fairly well on Poshmark. It's a size six in toward sizing. And it's this color block ringer style sweatshirt. That was cute. And new with tag. Oh, this was also new with tag. And this is another brand that was requested. This retailed for $65. And it is Chico's. And it's this ombre eyelet kind of little jacket, size one. Goodwill won in $19.99 for this, which is ridiculous. <laughs> and that's why no one purchased it, which is how I was able to get this at the bins. I think this is a great piece because it's really lightweight. 
um, so I can fit it in a box easily and also it should do really well and it's new with tag. Another brand that was actually requested from the little text box from y'all was Anthropology and older pieces that I don't pick up. And so this is Moulin at Soars. It is a lace dress. Like yeah, I could definitely see this selling for $25, $30. Really cute. I know I just talked about how I don't pick up Madewell t-shirts, <laughs> but if it has some kind of cute factor to it, uh, then I consider it, especially if I was willing to sell it for like 15 bucks, which is kind of what these mall brand boxes are for, for people who don't mind selling things for 15 to $30, and that's where their kind of sweet spot is. This is a striped Madewell t-shirt. So yeah, I think that would do well in that price range. Okay, the next piece is a tee by Talbots, size large, which is good. And this looks like it's never been worn, ribbed, open front cardigan, and it's got a waist tie that's still attached which is always good well it's actually still on there another piranha piece i thought this one was really cute i come across a lot of piranha had the bins but uh, a lot of it's really old or really damaged but the ones i do pick up i make sure they uh, look like they're newer pieces and definitely something that would sell well right now this is piranha and it's a chenille cow neck pullover in this really pretty lavender purple color and it is a size large, which is also great. And then a few more pieces. I've got this loft dress. I'm still figuring out loft, but this is a off the shoulder stripe dress with this three quarter sleeve tie wrist detail, striped, cute, size four. This is actually a piece I looked up because I wasn't sure and it should definitely sell in that 20 to $30 price range. At the very least, this is Columbia, and I forget the exact dress style number or name, but the number is on the materials tag, and so it should be really, really easy to list. It's got this gathered side with a zip detail there. Yeah, it's a dress, and so I think dresses by these athletic brands tend to just do a little bit better than, say, like, you know, a top, a pullover, etc. And then the last piece is an older Madewell tag but I know some people still really love picking up older Madewell, so I wanted to include it, and it's a high-low hem, oversized boxy striped button-down, cute, with this contrasting fabric. Let's see what season it's from. It's from spring 2016, so not too bad. And I also got this bag. <laughs> so that is everything that I picked up. I'm gonna go off camera real quick, tally up, what the total number is and what my average cost of goods was. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I got exactly 50 pieces and I spent $56.89. And so that brings my average cost of goods to $1.14, which is definitely offset by this like very heavy Beatrix Potter <laughs> book set. If it wasn't for that, I think it would be probably under a dollar, but that's fine. I'm just gonna cost average it as it is. So I'm very, very happy with this thrift haul. Thank y'all so much for joining me. I hope y'all found it fun or entertaining, or maybe you learned something. I definitely learned about that Hellasy brand and I'm very excited about that. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite piece from the haul was. And also be sure to let me know if you want me to cover this Mogi Box stuff going into the future. But yeah, give this video a big old thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll see y'all in the next one. Love you so much. Bye.